Lakeland Public Television presents Currents. Hello, I'm Bethany Wesley. Thank you for joining me. Tonight on Lakeland Currents, we are going to return to education, specifically focusing on how high schools throughout the region are helping their students explore potential career paths through career academies. Career academies provide coursework and real-world workplace experiences for students who want to learn more about, observe, and in many cases actually acquire the foundational skills necessary to obtain employment and thrive within a specific industry. Joining me for this evening's discussions are Judy Richer, the coordinator of Bridges Career Academies in the Brainerd area, and Jen Bogie, the coordinator of Bemidji Career Academies at Bemidji High School, where she is also a school counselor. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm here. looking forward to our discussion. Yes. As we kind of get started here, why don't we provide a little bit of background in terms of you know, what you've done and how it kind of got to where you're doing it today, in terms of yourself personally. Um, well, I actually have been in education for a long time. I worked at Central Lakes College as the Dean of Students, okay. and with my, in that, my role there, Bridges, the Bridges Career Academy and Workplace Connection Program was part of my job. Okay. And so I retired, and they asked me to come and continue on working with the Bridges Academies. Okay. And that was about four years ago. Four years, okay, great. And Jen, tell us a little bit about your background. Sure, I've been a school counselor for many years. I, I started at Hibbing High School. Um, I worked at Hibbing High School as a school counselor for two years and look, uh, worked in the Duluth area, a little school called Renshaw oh. for a year, and then um, six years at Cass Lake Bina High School as a school counselor, and then I've been at Bemidji High School for the past 10 years or so, um, mostly as a school counselor, but I worked uh, as a teacher for three years as well. Okay. Interesting. Well, I'm really looking forward to this discussion because we have two different programs that are very similar and yet are operated very differently. And so first, let's focus a little bit, if we would, on the Bridges program. Tell us a little bit about when it was getting started, when you look back at the foundations, did you look at accomplishing a certain goal or how did you kind of start having those conversations that led to the program? Well, the Bridges program is actually having its 10th year okay. this year, celebrating mm -hmm. its 10th anniversary. And it started as an initiative from local business and industry saying we need employees and we need skilled employees. And so the uh, actually the f initial partners were Central Lakes College, uh, the Brainerd Lakes Area Chamber, and five local school districts. Okay. And they developed the program. Okay. And about five years ago, they looked at the academy portion and wanted to strengthen that. Okay. And so it was redesigned. Okay. And the goals at that time were to, to really look at making sure that, that students were c college and career ready for regional programs and the focus was regional. Because okay. there were a lot of talented young people that were leaving the community and really could have stayed and made um, good salary. The other piece of that was that they really wanted to make sure that students understood what careers were all about. And so what that meant is to have real world experiences, to see the job as it really was. Not just learn about it, but then actually get out there and see it and in some cases do it. Yes. Okay. So, and we're gonna get into uh, actually <clears throat> how the career academy is set up and how they work, but I wanna turn it to Jen a little bit now and talk about Tell us where you're at in the process and kind of mm -hmm. what it is your goals are at this point. Well, right now we're in the implementation phase, and in, in Bemidji it's, it's very similar. I think it, it started and it stemmed from looking at how we can best help students to transition from high school to the world of work, to college, um, to technical college, um, also with the emphasis on our community and our regional economics and talking with business owners and, and industry here in Bemidji and greater Bemidji saying, well, we have a need for um, people in our area and how can we best convey that need to our students in preparation for success with high paying, high skilled jobs regionally. And so we have that regional focus as well. Um, and, and so we've been in a, a phase of, of talking, um, and now we are in a phase of implementation. And so it's, a, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. You just recently had your uh, registrations, and the students are showing their interest now, yes. which will 
formulate next year, correct? Correct. Okay. And so this school year has been um, a process of conveying what career academies are, mm -hmm. um, why why we have them in place, okay. and and um, and we we were able to convey that message and still need to more so. I, I think there's still a lot of question around what is a career academy, um, but we've had numerous students register for an academy, so we know that the interest is there. Um, and um, exciting to move forward and see how it, how an academy will look throughout their education. Yeah. It's not new to have career planning discussions at that high school level or to have opportunities for coursework. Tell us, Judy, if you would, what makes a career academy unique? Well, the career academies that we have through Bridges are nothing like anything that you will find in any other state. Um, what most, most states have done is they've actually taken a look at or they've they've created an entire academy focus for their entire school. So their school is, wow. has focuses on three or four academies. If you went to Nashville, for example, they have a broadcasting school that focuses on nothing but those careers. Okay. And so students select their high school based on their career. Mm -hmm. What we have done instead is we have looked at the individual school and said, what is it that you do best? what is interesting in your community, what, what is important in people in the school's community re is reflective of their, of their course offerings. And so what we've done is we've taken a look at what course offerings they've had and we've built academies around those course, around those course around offerings. Around their strengths. Right. Okay. And they can be disciplinary or interdisciplinary and what that means is that we, they can be strictly um, related to a specific discipline, which means all of the courses within the academy are from auto mechanics. Okay. Or they can be interdisciplinary, and with that auto mechanics, they can include um, English courses, because obviously an auto mechanic has to write up an order. They can include math courses and so on. So the academies are built in one of two ways, okay. and they're built around the high school strength. Okay. So, Jen, as, as Bemidji is implementing this now, tell us a little bit about how the career academies will work. It's not mm -hmm. a one semester program, correct? No. No. Tell us a little bit about how it will operate. Well, we have six different academies right now that students can register for. And within each academy, students will have the foundational courses that they need to earn a high school diploma. And so the core courses are still embedded, of course, with you know the English, math, science, social, um, in order to earn a high school diploma. And with electives, students have so many electives that they have to choose from. At Bemidji High School, we have 14 different departments and numerous electives. And so an academy allows a student with a specific interest to pull certain electives that are relevant to that academy or that certain career pathway and take those courses to learn more in-depth um, information on that specific career area. And then with that, a real-world experience um, their junior or senior year where they're out in the community building connections, relations with community experts in that field. So an internship or a job shadow or a work experience. Um, we're pretty flexible on how that real world experience will look because it's, it's really specific to that student's need. Okay. Um, but we would like them to get connected and, and learn more in-depth information about that area. In addition to the real world experience, we are hoping to and, and will have for each academy uh, college credit. Okay. And so um, one or more of their classes at Bemidji High School within the academy will be um, free co college credit for that student, whether it be um, an articulation agreement with area uh, technical schools or community schools or a college in the high school okay. course. Yeah. So tell okay. us a little about, are the classes or are the courses are they in the actual high schools then, or are kids traveling outside? Does it depend on the Career Academy itself? Well, it actually does depend on the Career <laughs> Academy itself. And that is, the majority of courses are in the high, taken in the high school. However, we do have some Career Exploration Academies for some of our particularly small schools, those schools that may graduate 25 students. Okay. And so their opportunities, what what we do with those particular students is create an internship or a work experience outside of the community 
that will help them focus on that particular career because the high school doesn't have any course offerings there. Sure. So, and again, our, because the relationship between what the academy expectation is is the same, we do each of the academy courses focuses on, on real world experiences. The other piece that we include is the employability skills. Oh, okay. So making mm -hmm. sure students understand that if they have to give a presentation in a particular course, that's what's it. That's because that expectation would be out in the real world, uh, in a job, mm -hmm. for example. So as you're mm -hmm. starting to talk to your students, and I'm sure in many cases parents as well, about what this is, are you finding people are excited and enthusiastic about that opportunity? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think there's a lot of um, interest and questions and positive momentum for sure by by students, by parents, by community members, which has been very exciting, um, business leaders and business owners. Uh, and there's been a lot of talk with business collaboration businesses um, and a lot of good feedback. And so the momentum has been really good. And, uh, and we're listening to what businesses are saying that they need with their future employees and um, implementing that within the education. So we're really trying to increase the collaboration. Um, and one thing that business partners say they need, often it, it just comes up reoccurring in conversation, are the employability skills, the okay. um, soft mm -hmm. skills. And so those skills are embedded within the academy as well. And they're embedded in numerous ways. One is through a course that we offer. It's a requirement within an academy. It's work seminar, which teaches the employability skills, reliability, good communication, um, uh, understanding boss's expectations, supervisor's expectation, ethics on the job. Mm -hmm. um, and then in addition to that, it's understanding your own personal interests and vocational strengths and how that relates to occupations out there. Um, within our community or um, within the state, you know. And so, um, so we're talking to business partners and their interest has been really high throughout the process and their role is key within the academy. And um, <laughs> how important is it to keep those relationships going? I mean, I'm sure it's easy, I don't wanna say easy, but at the beginning when you got that enthusiasm, has it been hard at all to maintain it, or no, they've seen the success? No, they, in, the, in our region, they have seen the success. We have business partners that have been around for 10 years okay. since its inception, and they maintain. Um, Bridges, because we're a regional program, we actually are um, managed through a leadership team, okay. and the leadership team is made of education, business, and local chambers. And so business has always been very, very strong and, and linked and has been very good at helping direct the program. So. Oh, great. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you've said that they've been enthusiastic about being a partner now. So obviously you expect that would continue as things grow. That is the hope and the plan. Absolutely. That's um, integral. It's, it's um, top of the list in terms of um, making an academy work our community partners are, are key. So, um, and so yeah, absolutely. And just like Bridges, we have a similar um, group of people who come together from different entities saying, we're gonna collaborate and work together and this is our vision, the chamber and greater Bemidji um, and industry. And, and so we. Speaking a little generally, how important is it for a high school just in general to help their students thinking earlier about careers. I mean, is there a, there's obviously benefit if it's growing, what is that benefit? Well, there are really two benefits. Um, the, the benefit that you'll actually see is on the back end. And I'm not sure if you're aware of the number of students who have huge college debt, mm -hmm. who are doing reverse mm -hmm. transfer, which means they start started a four year and come back to a two year because they need they want hands-on skills. And so that has been key. The other thing, because Bridges focuses on, on the academic middle, okay. and those are students in that BC range, okay. 
And um, those are usually uh, students who tend to either stay in the community, their local community, or come back to their local community. Mm -hmm. And now, if they've experienced an academy in their high school, because their business experience is local, their real life experience hands-on, yeah. they get to know what's available to them. So when they come back into their community, they already know that there is a possibility of a job and where those jobs are. And in some cases, they might actually have gone out to say, have had a speaker in the classroom, which would have been, you know, they the owner contact. of that business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have contact. And those students who stay in the community are much more easily find employment and have those partnerships mm -hmm. and those friendships. They've already made those connections. So. And Jen, we've talked a little bit about this mm -hmm. as well, because while you are still in that implementation stage, you have had success with the Mechatronics, which yes. is one of your career academies. Correct. Um, yeah. Tell about the kind of student that you've seen thrive through this. It's not just your high achievers, as Judy's saying. It, it isn't, and, and it's high achievers too. You know, um, And with the Mechatronics specifically, um, we have students in there who are planning on going into engineering and want to go a four-year track in terms of college mm -hmm. and maybe beyond four years and want to learn the intricacies of the hands-on problem solving. Um, we have students who in mechatronics are um, where colleges or high school is a little more difficult for them. They are a hands-on learner. Um, book work isn't what um, they enjoy or it isn't necessarily their strength and they want to get in and, and fix things with their hands That's how they learn. That's how they excel and so students who have struggled in high school go into the mechatronics program and thrive and thrive with difficult challenging rigorous um, expectation and then in addition have an opportunity to visit partners community partners who are hiring and um, job opportunities um, for after high school. And you mentioned, you know, just that tradition of um, uh, transition in high school and how that, that looks for students. And I think at the high school level, it's, it, it needs to be all about transitioning students from school to work, to college, to technical college. And so um, with our academies, too. It's not exclusive to any one particular type of student. Um, it's, it's open to, to all students, um, but I think the focus primarily is technical, vocational, okay. because for so long, I think our focus has been on a four-year track for, yep, sc for students happens. where it's, if, if you want to have a high-paying job, then some would say that you need to go to a four-year college, which is an awesome opportunity for so many, and um, so many have found great success, and it's a wonderful path. That's a path that we have mastered. You know, we, we have a path for those students. For a technical, vocational path, we, it hasn't been clear, um, and information on the opportunities through a technical, vocational path um, hasn't been conveyed so well to students because the the job outlook for so many of those careers and the high paying wages that go along with it are are really positive and so it's giving students that opportunity to learn about that as well um, and so it, we're not it, we're, it's it's open to all students um, I think that um, however it you know we want to make sure that um, all students have that opportunity tr to transition mm -hmm. because high school, that's, that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. and, you know, one of the sidebars as we talk about students that we've noticed is um, we have students d do a survey at the, when they've completed an academy as well as check their transcript to see how they're doing. Oh, how they did. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we've noticed is that students' grade point average has gone up substantially outside even of the academies. Yes. yes, because they're suddenly interested in school. Um, and parents who, who have students complete an academy, we do, I'm not sure what you have decided to do, but when a student completes an academy, we do awards and courts. We give them a recognition and actually give them an honor court mm -hmm. upon graduation. 
degree. So they're recognized at graduation. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. And mm -hmm. and what we've also discovered is that families are becoming much more interested. And many families will say when their students go through graduation and they're and they're walking down, you know, the aisle with their green cord on, you know, mm -hmm. families will stop us after graduation ceremonies and say, you know, my son suddenly became, or my daughter suddenly became interested, or this is the first time my child has ever completed something. And so it, it's a, you know, there are all sorts of other benefits that, that we don't necessarily see. Mm -hmm. but, that now, even outside of the academy, you see yes. it in a different way. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Let's see if we can try to put almost like a face on this a little bit. Could you tell us maybe an anecdote or a story about a student that perhaps had succeeded and didn't maybe expect to or something she or he learned through their experience? Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. When our approach to academies, as I said, is a little different, mm -hmm. and that is um, we do not have any criteria for a student getting into an academy. Okay. When they take the first course, then if they say, oh, this is wonderful, that's, that's we've been successful. Or if they say, oh my gosh, uh -huh. what was I thinking? We've always also been successful. Mm -hmm. And because that first course definitely will tell them whether or not this is their interest. And um, one of the things that we had a particular student who completed an academy and came back two years later okay. and said, I want to talk to you because the, I, she was in a health, cat, a health careers academy and she said, I discovered how exciting this was when I had the work-based experience. And so okay. she's now working as a dietitian in a hospital based on going through that academy. Oh, interesting. Um, I've, we've also had a student who or we've had many students who will come back now and say, you know, I was going to do, do this, but after I took this course, now I'm doing this. The other thing that, that is sort of a sidebar is that students can see how they can match their interest as well as their skills. Okay. So we've had a graphic student that, um, that was actually very interested in hunting and outdoors things and he's now working for a company that does absolutely nothing but design things for outdoor magazines. Oh, so interesting. Mm -hmm. So if they find something that they're interested in, then they can pair it with an, a hobby or a passion, right. then they're yes. even more successful. Mm -hmm. And correct me if I'm wrong, but there's going to be just as much benefit for a student who thinks that he or she wants to go into nursing, starts and then finds out, oh my gosh, this isn't for me. Mm -hmm. We've talked about that a lot. That is an absolute benefit at, um, to find that out in high school um, before you enter college, pay for tuition, and then enter the world of work to, to learn it's, it's not something that is beneficial. Is, um, it's good for the student to know. It's good for the employers because employers want to hire a person who is knowledgeable on their own interests and strengths and knowledgeable about the career that they're going into about the job that they're trying to achieve or trying to obtain and so it's that is a, that is a big benefit when a student enters a uh, an internship for example a nine-week internship in which they'll earn high school credit for um, and they're able to see the real world intricacies of the occupation and to walk away and saying you know what not for me is mm -hmm. is um, a benefit and they've learned from that experience and mm -hmm. So great, I, I think mm -hmm. that's great because you can learn what you like and what you don't like as well. I want to ask some of the more technical questions, but I mean, as a parent, is there a, a cost or how are costs applied for the programs? How do those work? For there, there isn't a cost. Okay. Um, it, it, it's entirely free. So for Bemidji High School, students will, they're introduced to the, the various academies and each year we'll add on okay. additional academies. Um, so next year we're looking at adding on at least three um, additional academies. They register for it. Then we have students identified as that particular interest. Um, encourage them to take courses that are within the academy. And, um, and then partake in work seminar, a real world experience. 
Um, but in addition to that, you know, of, of course, there's, there's no cost involved at all. Trying to identify now what specifically students within academy will do each year. And so um, each freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, and senior year, there's going to be a specific objective for academy students. And the objective will encompass that community involvement okay. in, in some form, getting students connected to employers and community experts. We have been very lucky that we have been funded by the Otto Bremer Foundation and now National Joint Powers. And so these grant funds have allowed all of the services to be free. So job shadows, tours, biz, any kind of business experience, speakers in the classroom, all of those are free to students okay. so, mm -hmm. or schools. Okay, interesting. So I'm assuming you're, t you're getting the word out to students and you know, you've been doing it for years, I get. Um, but you got some parents tuning in here now who are probably thinking, my kid hasn't told me a word about these opportunities. What would you want parents to know? I mean, is there something you would want them to kind of keep in mind as they start having discussions with their students? Yes, I would certainly would, if they are with, if their school lies within the, the National Joint Powers region um, or Region 5, that their schools are all eligible for or have career academies on site. And so they can certainly go to our website and gather information. But one of the most important things I would like them to to know is that um, the careers are important to kids and and make sure that when you speak to your children you listen to not only their interests but also their skills and see if mm -hmm. you could match them. I think conversation is fantastic. Um, I remember in um, high school talking with my parents about it and my mom looked at me and she said, Jenny, I think you need to be a school counselor. You know, and at the time, I didn't really get what she was saying. You know, at the time, it was, it was um, difficult for me to grasp that. But um, parents really know and, and are always thinking about where their child is going to be in the future. And so having those conversations, I think, is very beneficial. And researching the opportunities that we have at the high school and um, in Brainerd, you know, looking at what is available for students and encouraging students to embrace those opportunities um, because it is very preparatory with future success and mm -hmm. awesome. well i want to thank you guys both for joining me today i think we've learned a lot about the programs about the opportunities that exist in the in bridges and then also in the developing here bemidji career academies thank you guys for tuning in to this tonight uh, please join us on our next episode